you're going to see in this film corruption to the highest level from the police. What I'll ask you, where are GB News? Where the f*** are you? Yeah. How come you're not covering any of these stories? Do you know the important thing is that we have citizen journalism, we have independent media, and every single one of you who now act as the media. It's important that you share this film. Again, our survivor is here today. I'm losing my voice already. Our survivor is here today. Just for one minute, listen to this story and try and think of going through any of the things that they've gone through as a family. We'll now play the film. This episode covers one of many serial child abuse victims. Her name was Corrine and she lived in the Telford area. We focus on her accounts as she relives her child of memories. Memories of countless rape, drugs, violence and a systematic failure to protect the vulnerable. It's through the bravery of but one of those individuals, the truth will be exposed. How, if you can explain, how did it start on the streets as a young girl in Telford? Um, I'd be walking down the street and they they just pull over in the car and sort of try to get you in the car and be nice, say hello, how you doing? Just go on like they're your friend and even ask me how my mum is and stuff like that because they lived on the same street as me so they, they'd ask me questions like that. Oh, so some of the men that first started grooming you lived on your street? Yeah, there's two, well not even the main ones because I was groomed by quite a lot but um, two of them lived literally three doors away from my mum's. And you was how old at the time? Twelve. You're twelve. How old are they? Um, in their twenties. In their twenties. I got raped, um, drugged up, they got me drunk, I went to parties. Would they get drunk? Sometimes. I've heard lots of girls describe these parties. Can you explain what happened at one of these parties? Um, we'd all go there, there'd probably be loads of men. If a room this size, it'd be full of men. Um, there'd be, say, me and two or three of my friends. And that was it, that we were having a party, we were having a drink, they were giving us spliff, they were taking other drugs. Um, I, I never went on to any hard drugs myself. Mm. Um, but yeah, they'd give us a spliff, give us bottles of vodka, Bacardi, Jack Daniels, and get us dr drunk and then want to have us at the end of the night. When you say have you, just explain that. Want to have sex with me at the end of the night. How many of them would have sex with you at the end of the night? Sometimes a couple, sometimes just one. Yeah. I wasn't, I can't say I was lucky. <laughs> when I was, I was lucky compared to some of the girls, because some of the girls got gang raped by a lot of them, but me it was a couple at a time. Sometimes it wasn't even in, in the rooms, in, in like the place where the party was. Um, they'd take us in the car and take us up the reeking and do it up there. Um, they take us by the old manor school. Um, there was um, two sets of um, like little forest um, things on the on the Hadley playing field, and they used to drive behind the back of them. Before they'd even pull up, the, the passenger seat car would be back, all the way back. So they'd say to you, "Jump in and lie down." Because I remember the one day going past my mum. What are you laying down? In the I'm lying down there, saying to me, "Keep down, because your mum's there. Your mum's there." keep down and my mum's there yeah I was I was in a black jeep how old were you at the time then um I didn't have Josh so 13 do you remember which men were in the car it was a one man in the car yeah who's that Wadge Wadge yeah did he rape you that night yep hi there hi, I love. I've come to do the boiler series yeah are you aware of it yeah yeah oh, I, I am yeah yeah, yeah. so what's your name it's Wadge Wadge okay. W-A-J Wadge Haybridge Gas can I just take a quick look at your any other gas appliances? Yeah, actually, I want you to. Oh, sorry, let me just shut that. How are you? I bet you didn't think you'd be seeing me here, did you? I've got some questions to ask you about allegations of child rape. You raped a 12 year old girl, you took her virginity in a house next door to a mosque in Telford. What do you have to say about that, kid's face? What do you have to say about that, Wedge? What do you have to say? I'm you just... raped, you took her to the Reekin and you raped her. What do you have to say? Why do I have multiple girls? Why then multiple girls and make allegations that you raped them, you trafficked them, you're part of a Pakistani rape mafia who have targeted this town and destroyed girl and girl and child after child's lives? What do you have to say, Wadge? Wadge, how have you got clearance? You're on, a, you're on a stalking charge, right? You're a convicted rapist. How have you got clearance to come to vulnerable ladies' houses on, your own, on their own? 
Do you mind, ex do you mind explaining that to me, Wadge? How have that. you got clearance, Wadge? How have you managed to get clearance? How, how, I'm, I'm not going to rest, Wadge, until you cannot enter any lady's house on your own. What do you say to the allegation that you took Corinne Dad up to the weekend and you raped her when she was 12? She was fighting you to keep her knickers and pants on while you dragged them off of her. She's a 12-year-old child. You was, what, mid-20s, Wadge? I was scared and I was saying to him, don't do that and don't take my trousers off. And I was fighting him and um, trying to keep my trousers up and he was just pulling them down. And um, then he promised that he wouldn't put it inside me and then he did. And it, it, it was just a really horrible day, to be honest. What would you have to say to that, Wedge? What would you have to say to it? Total silence. Total silence, Wedge. How many girls have you raped? How many child's lives in Telford were destroyed by you and your gang, Wedge? And now you walk around like there's no trouble in the world. Girl after girl's lives are totally destroyed. Do you want to leave, Wedge? Yes, please. Okay, what do you have to say, Wedge? How have you got entrance into ladies' houses, Wedge? Huh? How many children have you raped in Telford? How many children and families' lives in this town have been destroyed due to you and your Pakistani gang raping them? What do you have to say, Wedge? Nothing. What do you have to say to the allegations? A 12-year-old girl, she fought you She fought you while she dragged her knickers off her when she was 12 years old in the house next door to the mosque, Wedge. What do you have to say? You didn't think this was going to come back to you, did you? You thought you got away with all these crimes. Because th th this is your this is your right to reply, Wedge. No, follow me. This is your right to reply. No, that's, that's so what I'm going to So you can get on your phone to your little Pakistani mates. No, it's not that. That's how you play it. That's how you play it. See, this is this yeah. is the thing that I'm here. Not... Well, there's no risk to you here, is there, Wedge? Shut there's the no, There's no risk to you here. Shut my door. There is. There's no... What's the risk? So I'm inviting you, so follow me. You're inviting me. What? Come on, Wedge, what's the risk? What's the risk, bro? What's the risk? Wedge, Wedge, me. your career's over, bruv. Follow me. Your career's over. No. You destroyed little girl's lives, Wedge. No. Follow me. Follow you. Come on, come on, get in the car. We've just confronted this alleged rapist in Telford. We have multiple sources, multiple girls who name him some horrific crimes, raping them in the, in, in the Reekin, in the hills, raping a 12-year-old girl, taking her virginity. And um, we've just confronted him in the house. We wanted to get him away so we can ask him the questions. We've asked him the questions. He's told us to follow him. We're following him. He's pulling up at the police station. Do you know the problem is these lot are so confident about the police because the police are on their side. Come on, Wadge. Where are you going? Wadge, you're that com you're, you lot are that confident that the police are in your pockets, aren't you? How many police officers are on the payroll of your gangs in this town? How come you're that confident? Wadge, this is your right to reply. This is your right to reply, Wadge. What do you have to say? Wadge, you dragged a 12-year-old girl and you raped her. You forcefully raped her with gangs of men. Allegations against me. You forcefully raped a 12-year-old girl. You so, took her to the weekend and you raped her, Wadge. What do you have to it? say? Wadge, you're a convicted rapist already, aren't you? You're on a stalking charge, Wadge. I don't know why. The police will deal with everything. They, so they don't need to deal with it, mate. If you have got away with it. Men in this town, Pakistani men in this town, got away with destroying young girls' lives. Let now, you're famous. Everyone's going to know who you are. Fine. Wedge, simple question. Why would Kareem Dad make this up? Right. I, I need... Wedge, why would she make this up? Why would another girl, I've got another girl, who, who, who doesn't know Kareem, who says you raped her? Why would they make it up about you? Why would these girls randomly make up that you have raped them? Traffic. Why would they do that? In, the, in your sister's house, in the house next door to the mosque, they give us locations. We've been to see the places where you raped them. Number 18, that's the mosque. I got raped at number 16. That's the mosque? Yeah, number 18's a mosque. I got raped in number 16 by Wedge. By Wedge? Yeah, that's the first time that I had my virginity taken. You had your virginity taken in the house? Eh? Yeah. We know all the gang members, we know that you passed them around. We know that you made her duck down in the car when she was 12 years old because she drove past her mum. Right. What do you have to say to that? I Why would she make that up? Why would she make that up? Right. Why would she make that up? Can I speak? Yeah. They're not going to help you. Right, this is a documentary. I'm yeah? being intimidated inside a police station. Oh. Right. Now you want the police protection, do you? No. You terrorise young girls and now here you are hiding he's, from the... He's you want the police. He's making allegations. He doesn't right. care, bruv. Right? Because he knows what you've been up to. They're Everyone knows what you've been up to. Yeah? Your life is changing now, Wadge. Okay, bro? Your life's changing. Everyone's gonna know who you are. You see, Baxi, I'm not gonna arrest till this is gone. Till you can't enter a woman's house again, bro. Yeah? Everyone's gonna know. Excuse me. So, Wadge, look at you running to the I'm police. I'm intimidated inside the police look station. Look at you running to the police, Wadge. You're a big, brave man when it's 12 year old girls, isn't you? What are you scared from? No, I'm not scared of you. Here you are. What are you, what, no, what, why are you hiding in the police station? No, no, no. Why have you run to a police station? I'm not. Yeah, that's fine.
Let's go. Watch. You're not going to answer, no? No, let's why, go. Why would these girls make up, watch? Watch, why would these girls make up? Why would they make up? Give me one reason why random girls who don't know each other would make up that you raped them, watch. Watch. You're, you're a star in episode five of The Rape of Britain. No, no, no. But you're a star of the rep no, no, You're a star. No, no, you're a star of episode no, five. No, I don't want you to love me. You're a star of episode no, five of The Rape of Britain. Is. You're a star of episode five of The Rape of Britain, watch. Right. He's coming to you guys for protection because, no, 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 to be honest, Telford Police have protected them for the last 30 years. No, one second. You've been protected by Telford Police, right. haven't you, for 30 I'm years, you. He's making serious you've been protected. allegations. You've been protected. Right. You and your gang have been protected me. for 30 years by this police force. I, I tell you what, Vic, do you want a word of you? Yeah, can I have a word with you on the side so we actually know where we are with it? Well, I'm just doing my job, mate. That's why I'm here. You can do your I, job. I'm not, I haven't committed a crime. I'm asking this no, man questions. That, yeah. I can't talk. So, I what do you have to say? You're that confident that the police are going to protect you? The reason I'm at the police station is because he's making serious allegations. If I'm not making serious allegations. I'm young, girl, young girls are making serious allegations, Wedge. If there's any truth in that, children made I'm allegations. Here, Wedge. He needs to speak to the police. Watch, the girls have made allegations. If there's a case well, to answer, the house up, I'm here and I'll answer it. Watch. Right. As simple as that. Right. So now Watch. you know that he's fucked You're in episode right. five of the Rape Britain. Now, now you know, now you know he's fucked it because I'm here. Why would the girls make so up, Watch? If I've done something wrong, Dude, right. Right. Let's, let's Watch. Watch. Why would the girls make up? Why would the girls make up, Watch? Right. Why would the girls make up? Watch. Why would the girls? You're going to see the girls saying it on TV. Any, they, it's in a documentary. Oh, it doesn't matter. Bring them here. Yeah, you're yeah, going to see it, Watch. Shut it for no reason. Get into the room. And then people want to help us disclose the relevant date. That's it, mate. I'm done. You see, it's on our documentary. It's coming out soon, yeah? So, so you're on a, you're on a telling to tell us anything? I've come and tried to tell you a hundred things. You have left vulnerable girls in situations where you've allowed their houses to be smashed up. You've allowed them to be driven from this country so that those gangs get away with it. Not you individually, but okay. your police force has stood by and allowed this to go on. Not just allowed it to go on, but they've actually allowed the girls to be targeted, driven, intimidated and fearful. And you haven't done the protection jobs that you should do. But And that, this is how confident they are. Look where the rapist runs straight to. He's run to you help. Yeah. Somewhere, one of your commanders is going to be helping him. But, but ordinarily, when we get jobs in like this, where someone's in the community, has worked and found things and got things, I've, I've they, come they to your they mate. They I, I went to like the evidence that they like yeah, I've done that with your police day. force. I, I, I haven't, I haven't dealt with you before. Uh, okay, so your your high-ranking police officer on, on episode two refused to take information from us. Rob Rondell isn't doesn't want to meet with Tommy. Rondell, That's not the, the, Tommy's not going to meet Rob. Rondell. These rapists and these gangs, the police identified 200 rapists in this town. They charged 11. They've been protected. These gangs have been protected by this police force for 30 years. It's the first place he run to. You decided to speak out. Yeah. Tell me what you've done to speak out. Um, the piece came out in the paper about Lucy and Becky and Vicky. Um, I read that and I think the same evening or the next day, um, I got in touch with Telford Police and I told them that I was one of them girls that they were looking for. Okay. And, yeah, it all went from there. When you say it went from there, people would hope to hear that the story is going to end in something positive. Has it been a positive experience since you went to the police? No, that's when the nightmare started. <laughs> that's when the nightmare started? Yeah. When you approached the police? Yeah. Can you just explain, give us the circumstances of what happened with the police? Um, I went to the police, um, at the same time a couple of the Pakistani lads, I was still talking to them. Um, they got to find out that I'd been talking to the police. Um, the police started going to other girls that I'd named as being victims and telling them girls that I'd named them, even though I told the police that I'd give them names anonymously to them. I didn't want them going to these girls and saying Corrine would give Of course, because some of the girls could still be in close contact. Well, that's what, that you just took the words out of my mouth. Mm. Half of the girls, they are still friends or they're in relationships with Pakistanis and most of them girls, they all turned against me. They, they started telling the Pakistanis that um, Corrine sent the police here, told them that um, We've been getting groomed by Pakistanis, and that's how everyone started to know because of the police. Why do you think the police would have done that? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I have complaints in about the police because what they done was wrong. I started getting threatened, um, told to keep my mouth shut. Not not too much of a bad threat at first. Um, then. Um, 
a couple of the lads, they all got together and decided that they were going to pay for me to go abroad and to keep my life shut and not say anything to the police and stuff. I went abroad, um, I was taken to the airport by them. Um, I left the country for a bit. Can you tell me who took you to the airport? Um, Noddy. It's the name he's popped up a few times? Um, his real name's Nadeem Ahmed. Having fled to Egypt, Corrine decided to come back to the UK to try and get justice. She sat down with the police, gave statements, they opened an investigation and they made many arrests of alleged rapists. It was at this stage that Corrine became aware that there were threats to her life. So she went to the police station to ask for help. Here's a recording of that. The duty social worker, for whatever reasons, can't do anything to help you this evening. Yeah. Okay. We've been advised to direct you towards branches, which is for mental health, with you feeling low. How's that going to help with housing? That ain't going to help my they... children, is it, with housing? So what, what do I do tonight? Where do I go? You're going to have to go and try and get in with your mum or friends. I'm not going back there, no way, mate. Not or for see if you can get enough money together to stop in a hotel or something else. I haven't got no money for an hotel. I'm really sorry. As the police force, we don't have accommodation. We cannot accommodate you. So so, you, so basically, I've got to leave from here now, still with no protection or nothing. I'm afraid so. Countless time finance and man hours have gone into the reconnaissance and intel of our alleged perpetrators. They've carried on living their lives. Some of them have family, some have moved away. Some own multiple businesses. They're living very good lives in those towns and cities. Some are in everyday contact still right now with children. We owe it to all the survivors of these gangs that they're confronted, that they're challenged, and at very least they're asked to explain how and why such crimes have been allowed to take place. Are you as disgusted as I am watching that? Can we just have a round of applause? This is episode five for the fact that five courageous women have told all, bared all, in an emotional way. It must be, it must be so, thick, so, it must be so challenging for them to do that, to come forward. Yeah? Without them coming forward, what do we want to do? We want to shine a light on what's happening in towns and cities across this country. The courage of these ladies is what helps us do that. They're wrong. I know everyone spent some money. I want to say a special thank you to every one of you. I know it's cost some money to get to Telford. It's an awkward place to get to. So I want to thank every, every one of you that's coming. Do you know all of these survivors? When I say, don't really piss me off, is I look at the rapists and they, they're living and running this town right now. They're driving around in sports cars. They've got their businesses. And then I look at the lives of the survivors. Yeah? Kareem, if I, let me read you, actually. Kareem, I hope you don't mind me doing this, yeah? If I, I can read you the messages from Kareem even just yesterday about the desperation and the fear of coming here today to watch this, of coming back to Telford, of the fact she's alone. Her family are here, she can't be here. She's going to be back on a plane now next week, going out of the country, where she's hiding where she's been driven from her country and driven from her home. On their asses, each and every one of them. So anything you put into these buckets and ladies are bringing them around, it's going straight to them. Some generous lady just come up to me and donated money there. So I'll thank everyone here. Karina's asked me to say a thank you to everyone who's come here today. But you see, I take the rewards for these films. I stand there, people watch the content, I take the rewards. There's a lot of people who do a lot of work behind the scenes to make these films possible. A lot of people who risk their safety, risk their lives at times. Surveillance, you know, in there we confronted Wach. The rest of them are in Pakistan. Because we spent weeks outside their houses, weeks outside their businesses. It's frustrating. You see the police officer in this case. She's also hiding as well. Because we, we, you know, I delayed this and delayed it and delayed it because I wanted to get them. I wanted to get them, but they're gone. Yeah? Now, every single town and city is played by these gangs. I, I, I want to say there, Richard Inman, I want to thank Richard. For, he's going to give a speech in a minute. Richard was heavily involved in this work. Kaz was heavily involved in this work. Secret P, Chris of Boston. There were so many people who put in so much time. And it's pretty, sometimes you're watching and I'm saying, have we got him, have we got him, have we got him? We're there one day, two day, three day. No, nope. we're looking at pictures of different men coming out of the houses. So every one of you who support our work, give us the ability to have teams that do that.
to create content like that, to support families like that. I think upwards of nearly £20,000 in the end was spent relocating this family. That's not our job. It's, did you see this building here? That's Telford Region Council's old building. That's their new building. Episode 6, we're going after them. You're going to get to see... You're going to get, you're going to get to see the faces. We're going to be speaking to them. They actively, 10 of them, we'll call them the Telford 10, actively signed letters to our Home Secretary. We've got their letter with their signatures on it, trying to block the independent inquiry into child exploitation in this town. Yeah. 10 of them, they're all Labour. They're all white men for Labour who were trying to hide this, yeah? I know we've been here a long time. You've watched this film. Again, I just want to thank you. Kareen, darling, I want to thank you for showing courage. I know how difficult it was for you. So... I'd like to ask... Has anyone else noticed a shift in the country, the way we're thinking? How many people are awake? How many people now understand we're being deceived, we're being lied to? Our borders are open, they're bringing people in that are going to be a risk to every one of your family members, including mine. I'll ask every one of you to do one thing, yeah? I, again, I'm, I'm grateful you've come here today. On March the 23rd, yeah? You need, if everyone has the challenge to go along, go home, and convince one more person to come with you, yeah? We're going to go... I want, we had an independent inquiry in Telford. We had an independent inquiry in Rotherham. Yeah, we had an inquiry in Rotherham. When they tried to get an inquiry in Oldham, it was put to a council vote. Oldham has a large Muslim population. One of the men involved in the grooming, I believe, was a welfare officer for Oldham Council. So you can understand why they don't want an independent inquiry. When it was put to the vote, Labour blocked the vote. They blocked the independent inquiry. There's been no uproar, there's a lot, I haven't got time to stress, I we will stress, on the 21st of March, we'll be in Oldham. Okay? And I urge every one of you, you've seen today, we can come here, I would question why, with all the places in this city that they can put the opposition, they put them all over there, yeah? In the hope to cause confrontations. Why, if there was someone causing a problem earlier outside the police station, they thought the need to send four police officers into the middle of thousands of people to try to pull them out. These sorts of things are done for optics, for photographs, don't fall into it. Again, we've shown in five demonstrations here, there's not been one single arrest. Not one. Right? We've held five of these rallies here, five of these films. We've come into this city, I would, again, not, I shouldn't need to give them applause, but Telford Police certainly have not stopped us in our journalism in this town. Okay? We've actively been in the town, we've been surveillance in, we've been allowed to hold our films on the day. The officers have been good, so I want everyone to remember that when we go to Oldham, for the public to remember we're not coming for trouble, we're coming to expose, we're coming to highlight, and we're coming to demand on behalf of the victims that there is an inquiry and the people in these council buildings and in those police uniforms are held accountable for failing these victims. There should be an inquiry into what happened the Green. Every one of you, I know you've come a long way, yeah? You've come a long way. We've been demonised, you've been slandered. I had my mate put... Do you know the disappointing thing? My mate said to me, he's got about, he's got about 100 employees, yeah? And he's got big contracts or big businesses. And he said he was uh, speaking to his mate who said he couldn't come, he was worried about coming. He said he'd lose everything he's got if he was pictured or photographed here with government contracts. But he's, he's still here, yeah? It's important. Nothing has been this important. There's no issue in our country that's important as what's been allowed to happen to our daughters in every single town and city. No, the public still have no idea of the size of this problem. And it ain't going to get any better, okay? It's only going to get worse. If there's ever an issue, then you should get up off your ass and come out on the street. It's this. We should be demanding it. There should be government. You know, when the NCA, the National Crime Agency, it can't be left to Telford Police to investigate rape gangs in this town because half the police work with the rape gangs. The National Crime Agency. The National Crime Agency needs to be brought in from outside into every town and city. 
It worked in some Yorkshire towns. The National Crime Agency reporting 30 convictions, 40 convictions in all different towns and cities. The NCA need to investigate these crimes in every town and city, and the government need to intervene and make sure that there are independent inquiries into what has gone on and who's at fault. Well, I'll hand you over to Richard. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah. And of course, it's not about the past, the present, it's about our children for the future. I got involved in this movement for my children and for my grandchildren. All of us here have children and grandchildren. Are we going to let this carry on? No. Are we going to stop it? Yes. Are we going to stop it? Yes. Of course we're going to stop it. And I have a word for those vile and disgusting Pakistani Muslim rape mafiosa. We see what they're like. They're cowards. They're cowards. They're cowards. For the Pakistani rape mafia, let me quote Liam Neeson to you. We're going to look for you. We're going to find you. And when we find you, we're going to send Tommy Robinson to your door with a camera to make you infamous. Thank you very much. some flowers here. I'm not going to embarrass you by trying to get you up here. Come second half here. Come second half. Come up here. Come up here. And do you all remember, do you remember there was uh, someone who criticised the Palestinian flags in, in Bethnal Green? Do you remember it? And the police yeah. dawn raided them. What people don't know is when they dawn raided him, his wife has been suffering and battling cancer for years. And yeah, you can't criticise the Palestinian flag in your own country. So we've got some flowers for Joe, who always drags herself here, do Your birthday card signed from everyone in here. Yeah. Yeah. struggled to make, you said you don't think you'd make another one. Yeah. You're here now. So done. It's a Scottish fighting in you. It's a Scotch in you. It's a Scottish in you. <laughs> I knew you'd be here, so I'm blessed to see you. But again, just um, Thank you, one of the other... Do you know what? We've, we've got... Do you know, we've done other documentaries where we've had to pull them at the minute. So a lot of other work's gone on. I don't know how much I can really tell about About another lady in this town and police failures. We've got, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for an outcome of some court cases coming up. But when you see the details behind the scene and what's gone on there, again, where this police force are just intent in locking up victims rather than the perpetrators. But I hope to see you all in Oldham. Make your plans. Is everyone here, every single person here, going to make it to Oldham on March 25th? And are you all going to bring a friend with you as well? That's your job. Every one of you has got a task. Go and convince someone else. Be brave. Be fearless. If you're English, if you're Scottish, if you're Welsh, if you're Northern Irish, whoever you are and you're watching this, get out with us on the streets. Enough is enough. If this was happening to Muslim girls in our country, every one of them would have took to the streets. It's about time we stood up for our daughters, our women, our sisters, right? And if you're watching this, I've just seen what's in the buckets. There's a lot of you all give a lot of money for these survivors. It's going to help them out like you wouldn't even believe. If you're watching this and you're one of the people who supported this event today, 
And we put it to a poll to see who wanted to have an outdoor event. So everyone, everyone liked it, everyone had a good day. It's important, it's important we do this. If you're one of the people who supported this, an event like this costs 10,000 pounds. I'm grateful that you put us in a position to do that. So, and I'm grateful to every one of you that have come. And uh, yeah, thank you, yeah, thank you. We'll see you in the next.